Hi everybody, welcome to my channel Frugalisma. My name's Sam and this is where I talk about all things sewing. Today is day 73 of 100 days of sewing and it's another Frugal Friday and I've got another Great British Sewing Bee inspired edition for you and this week it's Gents Week. But first of all I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far. If you're new here I talk about sewing on a budget usually and bring you hints and tips midweek. Fridays is usually frugal Fridays and then Sundays I usually bring out videos with plans and makes and that sort of thing. So my recent frugal Fridays I've been trying to find free patterns that tie in with the Great British Sewing Bee which has been aired in the UK at the moment and this week is no different. But I also look at any discounts and challenges as well so those will be at the end along with the announcement for the prize draw winners of my little giveaway from last week so keep watching for that so if that sounds like the sort of thing that you like please subscribe if you haven't done already many many thanks to everybody who has done so far and to anybody who's contributed to my coffee account as I'm extremely grateful for that thank you so much it does help because I do spend quite a lot of time on these videos so thank you so much for that so on to today's video so this week it's been gents week on the sewing bee and we had the contestants making hats for the first time the sort of hat that they were making was a baker boys hat so if you've ever seen the program Peaky Blinders it's that sort of hat a bit like a flat cap but extra these have got a lot more body to them they, they sort of sit higher on the crown and that's because they're made out of eight panels so the contestants got to choose their own fabric but they all work from the same pattern and they had three hours to do this which sounds quite a lot for such a small item but I imagine they're extremely fiddly and you need quite a lot of accuracy both in cutting out and in actual sewing so I did pity them this week actually. I can't imagine this being something that any of them had made. I personally have made a hat. I made the Sorrento bucket hat. It was a free pattern by LB Textiles. I think you've got to pay for it now but yeah they are quite fiddly and not nearly as much accuracy needed in that particular hat. So the contestants got to choose their own fabrics and I think they were mainly wools and of course Raph went straight for the geometric style bright orange and brown uh, I think everybody else played it relatively straight, maybe playing about with different colours or different colourways. So Raph went with the bold geometric design which was orange and brown and got a really nice sort of checkered effect on his. A few of the others went for different shades of the same colour, so different shades of blue. One of the contestants, I think it was Serena, went sort of half and half, which the judges didn't seem to particularly like. So yeah, Raph won that one with his geometric design. I think quite a few of the contestants had a bit of trouble getting all, this, all the elements actually stitched up and Esme did pull off Andrew's button at one point as well saying that it wasn't stitched on right but she did seem to have to tug it quite a bit so seemed a bit mean. The buttons were actually self-covered buttons so they had to you know at the end of the challenge then try and self-cover a button and then sew it on at the end. These hats were fully lined as well so there was the eight segments to the crown two bands around the crown and then a peak that had a stiffener in it as well so really quite fiddly and that's a lot of layers going through your sewing machine as well so quite tough on a home sewing machine I would have thought. So yeah it requires a lot of accuracy and not a lot of bodging. <laughs> I'm looking at you Damien. Accuracy in your sewing and accuracy in your cutting I think and I think it, Damien was picked up on bodging a little bit with his cutting. It didn't do so well but Raf did actually win that round and I think the geometric design really helped on that one it, it was absolutely stunning to look at so in terms of uh, patterns for this it was quite difficult to find patterns that matched exactly it seemed to be quite a lot of YouTube tutorials and things like that for Baker Boy hats and Newsboy hats I think Newsboy hats have probably got six panels and stand off your head a bit more whereas the Baker Boy hats seemed just like an oversized flat cap to me but I did manage to find a free one for you from Sew Magazine and that has got the eight panels and it's got it's got all the elements it's lined it's fully lined but it's got instructions as well for it and it does look quite feminine does this one because it's the, the fabrics that they've used but using normal tweeds you will get a much more masculine look with this. The only problem with this one is it's one size fits all and it doesn't tell you what the size is. So you're going to have to make it up and see what size it is. But I was pretty chuffed because I spent about two days I spent about two days trying to find a free pattern for you. You just need to sign up to their website, put in your details and you will be sent a download for that. 
So round two, transformation round, and the contestants were given two blazers, or up to two blazers, in order to make a woman's garment. Collars and cuffs and, and plackets and things like that that were asked to keep in within the design. It probably resulted in more wearable garments at the end than some of the other challenges that we've had so far. A bit odd that they, they were asked to make a woman's garment out of it. Maybe it would have been a bit more fitting using women's clothing and asked to be making a, a man's garment out of it since it was supposed to be men's week and they only really do one men's week but that's my only comments on it really. Round three is the made to measure round and they had five and a half hours to make a man's utility jacket. So for utility jacket I think sort of workwear, very basic jackets, no lapels, very minimal detailing, so no cuffs, but they did ask for three pockets. They didn't say that they wanted a lining in it, and they didn't say whether they wanted buttons or a zip. They're either called workwear jackets or chore jackets, very utilitarian, something that a man would wear hunting or fishing or just everyday, nothing fancy sort of jacket, usually made in a linen or a, a denim or a nice canvas or something like that. So this being the made to measure round, they were looking for a good fit across the shoulders, obviously arm length, that's the thing with men's clothing is getting the, the arms right and the, the shoulders right across the chest. To be honest, the ones that the contestants made were very much of a muchness, all but one of them had set in sleeves there was just one raglan sleeved and then it was just variations of, of theme really different uh, shapes of pockets some had uh, just a stand-up band uh, like a mandarin collar most of them didn't have the the band and the collar it was either one or the other some had zips some had buttons and some had drawstrings and in terms of generic patterns so sort of think of the merchant and mills utilitarian jacket are ready to sew, I've got a Julien char jacket, that sort of thing. So we'll start with Raph's because he did actually flash his pattern. Of, we saw the pattern company that he used which was Wardrobe by Me and I'm pretty sure it's the jacket that I featured a couple of Fridays ago that they had on discount and that was the utility jacket. There are lots of details in this pattern but I think Raph actually omitted quite a few of them and concentrated more on the fact that it had a yoke across the shoulder and I think it might have had uh, a two seam sleeve as well. So usual eye for design with Raph, he played on colour. It looked to me like he had block printed some denim. It looked like he got big, uh, either a floral design or a feather design on, on the denim, which went over the shoulder. So he did that with the uh, denim and, and then some green canvas. He had the blue going across the shoulder and down the sleeves and then his top pocket had the blue and then the rest of it was in green. So yeah, I'm pretty sure he used that wardrobe by me pattern. As I say every week, Kate at the Fold Line does a video where she tries to actually match the actual patterns that they've used. That's not what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find patterns that are free of charge that are similar. So I will never ever be able to find the exact pattern because I'm using free patterns. So despite Raph saying that his model was the same size as him except for the that Raph was shorter, he managed to get his a tad snug across the chest and it did look a little bit small and he knew that. He wasn't able to address it whilst he was making it so I think had his fitted I think he might have won uh, just for design features and just how striking it looked when it, it when it finished. Andrew also had a problem with fit, but he managed to resolve his, he called his a welder's jacket. His was navy twill with bright orange accents. He actually had eight, yes, eight pockets show off. So he had inside pockets on his as well. But yeah, he, he had problems with fit, uh, but very, very calmly just added a placket down the front and sorted it and finished it. Now in five and a half hours to be able to do a jacket, a man's jacket, I think he had a zip up his as well, eight pockets and to get it to fit in five and a half hours and deal with it. To be quite honest, I think he should have won actually. Now I'm not saying that I particularly like the design, I wasn't keen on the navy and orange but that's not really what he was getting judged on and it's you know that's just taste isn't it. I think he's one to watch is Andrew actually. I know I said that about Raph but <laughs> I think he's a, he's a good sewer is Andrew. It looked like Adina, Catherine and Adam actually all used the same pattern. That was a, a Mimi G pattern. Mimi G designed for simplicity and that was the S9052. This is one that Kate did pick up on. I think it's fairly spot on is that one. I don't think one's a man's and one's a woman's. I think there's just two different lengths and two different variations. There is a drawstring option on this one as well and I think some of them use 
the drawstring option and some of them just omitted that. Adina used a, a blue camouflage. Got an email from Minerva with a very similar fabric so I'll, I'll put a link to that below for you. And she had a bit of a nightmare with her zip and managed to insert it back to front but Again, like Andrew, she very calmly dealt with it and made a feature out of it. So I think she did really well with that, actually. And the judges decided that they quite liked that as a feature. Adam stuck with his nautical theme, did a navy blue twill one, and then had anchor patterns under the flaps, and then went with uh, silver buttons with anchors on as well. Judges just sort of picked up that he should have used a silver zip to tie in with his silver buttons. Again, it's just personal taste, isn't it? And then Catherine, she used a Donegal tweed. So all these are the same pattern, but the sleeves actually were quite short on him. She went for a different pattern underneath the collar, like I have done there, but much more striking. So we got to see that Rebecca was using a quick sew pattern, and it was a quick sew 4017. There's two versions of this quick sew. Uh, one's got welt pockets and one's just completely plain, no cuffs, no pockets. So obviously she had to use pockets, so she did two hip pockets and then put a pocket on the sleeve as well. She was another one that went for a camouflage print and I think with the raglan sleeves actually it's quite a wise choice because you're not having to set in sleeves, it's a little bit easier. Judges didn't really pass comment on Rebecca's, I, I don't know why, I think she did a good job but obviously I'm not there, I don't see it. So once again uh, Damien pulled it out of the bag for the mate to measure round after having a bit of a bad round on the first round. He adapted a western style pattern, it looked, it looked like it got like yokes down here which she adapted and used two different shades of grey card. It actually looked quite effective. He used the bits that were coming down here as his pocket flaps, which was quite a clever idea. And then he had angled hip pockets. I did notice that he didn't do anything else in particular, no cuffs or anything like that, but no, nobody did. That's the design of the jacket, it's very pared down. To make a man's jacket in five and a half hours, <laughs> it's quite, it is going some, isn't it? So according to Kate at the fold line, Loretto and Fari use the same Berda pattern for theirs, Berda 137. And I could definitely see it in Loretto's once, once she said it, because Loretto's was the only one that had a curve at the front and she was attempting to put a belt in as well. I couldn't see it immediately in Fari's, so I'm imagining that Fari must have squared off the, the front bits, so it just looked less like a safari jacket. Loratu's looked more safari than it did utility, but I suppose safari is utility, I don't know. Anyway, I think Loratu bit off more than she could chew, really. She had intended putting in a lining, nobody else was using a lining, and then she uh, had a real issue trying to get the snaps to make contact with the fabric so she walked away came back again and i think the snap fastenings were a downfall really because she just didn't have a finished product at the end fare on the other hand had a first ever made to measure finished garment and was overjoyed <laughs> So yeah, she was very pleased with herself as far to have actually finished and uh, yeah, she, she did well. So Serena went for a very bold choice in her fabric. The fabric I think was a ruby star fabric. It looked really striking, it just really sort of perked up that plainness of that jacket. And I'm pretty sure she used the Ilford jacket which is what we've got here. I've made this jacket, obviously, very straightforward jacket to make. The sleeve sewn in on the flat, very straightforward colour. I omitted the pockets and let the fabric do the talking. Don't know what Esme would say to that one. She did criticise Serena for matching her pockets, saying that she'd rather be able to see where the pockets are. I mean, you can't win with her, can you? <laughs> so yeah, fairly certain that Serena's was the Ilford jacket. Got drop shoulders and hers did as well. The Ilford's got a multitude of, of options really. This is a longer length than Serena went for. I've actually put cuffs on mine and a placket but you can omit that and just go for the plain sleeve like she did. So yeah you can go for as much or as, as little detail as you like with this one and there's about I don't know half a dozen different pocket ideas, breast pockets and hip pockets as well. The angled ones that Damien used that's an option on this jacket. I think there is a sleeve pocket or a pencil pocket on it as well. So I did manage to find a free pattern that was very, very similar to the Ilford, and that is the Paola jacket by Fabric Store. And it is very, very similar. The only real difference, really, is that the Paola has got a setting sleeve. It's not a dropped shoulder like this, setting sleeve, and yes, 
you can see a, a female model in this but I have seen people make these for men as well so the only thing that you really need to watch is that you're buttoning it up the right way for a man and that's usually what differentiates one from the other. I have got a video that helps you to download Fabric Store patterns because it's not that intuitive to download their patterns. They are A4 only as far as I know, I don't think there is A0 with those, but there is a layering option so you can take off the sizes that you don't want. Great little free pattern, you can go to town with it and add design details. You could even actually put a channel in for a waist drawstring if you're feeling up to it. There are no cuffs with it. If you've never made a jacket before and you're wanting to try on a free pattern I would imagine that's a really good one. And I reckon a, a confident hacker as well could actually put a zip in it because there are separate facings so you, you would probably be able to insert a zip down the facing if you, if you so wish. So yeah very straight through the body and one of those where you can make the fabric talk really and you could even try it in a, a camouflage fabric like Adina and Rebecca did so I will leave a link to the Minerva fabrics down below because they have emailed me with the camouflage or very similar camouflage fabric so men's patterns are, are sort of quite difficult to come by free patterns that is well men's patterns in general I have got a video that sort of I think it's my Valentine's video that looks more at free patterns for men. I'm focusing more on gift ideas for that but uh, I will link to that at the end for you if, you if you're interested in free patterns for men. But Mood have just brought out three men's patterns and so I thought I'd talk about those as well because there is a jacket in there. Now it's not a utilitarian jacket like this, it's got a little bit more detail to it in that it's got a ribbed neck, stand-up neck, ribbed cuffs and ribbing at the bottom got welt pockets and it is fully lined so it is a little bit more complex but I think it's a good one is it so yeah you need to be a little bit braver I think to take on this one it does have a yoke at the back it's got two parts sleeve and like I say it's got a welt pockets the instructions for mood are always in the form of a blog post and they do only supply patterns in US letter size but I've got a video that sort of helps you to if you're in the UK that helps you to get them printed on A4 but there is no A0 option. This goes from a 34 inch chest up to a 52 inch chest and like I say fully lined so absolutely brilliant. It's actually designed to be made with a rip stop fabric is this one it does say you can use um, other fabrics as well, but Fabworks, which is a local fabric store to me, but does sell online, does have some rip stop fabric available. One in a really lovely denim colour and then another one that's uh, quilted. I'll put a link to that below as well for you. So the other items in the men's wire from Mood are some trousers with this really unusual waistline detail on it. It's got buckles, then it's got pleats down the front, slanted pockets and then two patch pockets at the back. So I thought that was a really nice pattern as well. For a free pattern I think that's got some really nice design details on it. Sadly, I don't think I know anybody that would wear it. They go up to a 46 and a half inch waist and they're recommending a cotton twill, a canvas or a denim for that as well. So on to discounts now and whilst I'm talking about Mood, Mood are celebrating their 30th year anniversary and they have got 20% off site wide at the moment. So if you live in the US, good one. The discount is actually automatically applied. So if you're in the States and you wanted to buy the rip stop, now's a good time. Whilst we're on discounts, Chalk and Notch have got a Me Made May sale on. So they are offering 20% off everything site-wide, any purchase. If you spend over £25, they've got 25% off. And if you spend over £50, they've got 30% off. There are discount codes for that. It's not automatically applied and I will put the links below for it and that's valid until the 10th of May. Another discount for you and that's 50% off the Makerist style patterns. So thanks to a couple of people over on Instagram who gave me the heads up of this one. That's really kind of you, thank you. There are over three and a half thousand sewing patterns on the Makerist website so just as well we've got a bank holiday coming up because I think you're going to need it for looking at all those. So instead of them being nine dollars they're about four dollars fifty something like that. They do vary. But whilst we are looking at men's patterns today, they have got men's jeans patterns on there. They've got a button fly, which is a little bit unusual, and they're $6. That sale is on until the 2nd of May, which is Sunday. So they do have A4 and A0 options, and they do have a free pattern on there as well called the Herman shirt. They're calling it a deep V-back, but I would call it a, a scoop. 
and there's two sort of depths on that so you've got two variations two sleeve lengths on that as well that is available as a4 or a0 if you get the a4 it's only 24 pages so that's only free uh, until the 2nd of May and they're saying that that's uh, suitable for flowing it's like a viscose or a, a modal jersey and finally for the discount so over eight are redesigning their uh, paper pattern covers and so they are offering their paper patterns at 50% off as well so instead of being £16 some of them are £8 I don't think they're all available I did have a look for the heather dress and I couldn't see it that's one of my favourite patterns but the vintage shirt dress which is a dress that I was wearing last week also one of my favorite sew over it patterns that's just eight pounds for the paper pattern so definitely worth having a look at and Minerva are doing the same deal as well so if you're buying something from Minerva it might be worth buying it from them and especially if you've got a Minerva is it their club card because you get an extra 10% off so you get 60% off if you're making up an order to get the free postage which I think is orders over 25 pounds it might be worth you doing that speaking of Minerva they have got a little giveaway going on. That's uh, £25 for sharing your tips. So you just need to leave a comment on the link that I will leave you below and just pass on your knowledge and skills with a, a little tip. And there's 10 £25 vouchers. It's open worldwide. Each tip is a separate entry. So if you've got more than one tip, just do it as a separate entry. It's just picked at random anyway. So, you know, you can just put <laughs> any old thing down, I imagine. So yeah, winners are announced at the end of May for that. I think it's nice though, because you, you might be able to pick up a few tips yourself as well. So Love Sewing have got a great little giveaway of £150 of fabric from the Fabric Guys and that is just on their website you just need to enter on their website and there are extra entries for going onto their Facebook page and things like that. That's open until the 12th of May but I think it's at UK only is that one. They've also got a storage cabinet worth £2,400 up for grabs as well. Same idea just fill in the little form and extra entries for going onto the Facebook page and things like that. But yeah lovely idea for keeping everything nice and tidy and that is actually open until September. So just a few challenges on Instagram now. New month and new challenges start from the 1st of May and May is me made May and I think they're going into probably the 12th year of this now. This was instigated by Zoe on the Sozo blog and it is just a fun little challenge. Good way of getting you to wear your me-maids out every day. It's certainly the challenge that got me wearing my me-maids much more often. If you're new to Instagram, probably a good one for you to get used to taking photographs. I do find it a little bit of a bind having to do a photograph every morning. You can make a pledge or you can you can just join in as and when you want to. There's no massive commitment, but there's no prizes for it neither. It's just a bit of fun. And another one that's just a bit of fun is Dress Like Your Grandma 2021. This has been run by Raquel, who is Raquel Sewing and Knitting in Asia. And although it's called Dress Like Your Grandma, it doesn't have to be a picture of your grandma, but just use a vintage photograph of ins inspiration. And you can uh, use either a vintage pattern or you can use a reproduction vintage pattern and try and reproduce that, that photograph. So a bit of fun if you enjoy sewing with vintage patterns. And I'll just insert a picture of my grandma walking down the prom. Now, I'm not sure whether I'll be joining in with that one. I don't think I'll be able to find a, a pattern like it, but I will if I can get time. And then another one that's just for fun is say no to UFOs. So UFOs are unfinished objects, and I think some people get a little bit bogged down by them. Jacinka, who is pink mimosa by Jacinka on Instagram, has obviously got bogged down with hers. So I think she said she got 20. <laughs> I have definitely not got 20 unfinished objects but yeah good way to get rid of objects that have been languishing and committing to getting them done so all she's doing is asking you to take a photograph and making a commitment to getting them finished by the June the 20th and tagging her in and she's actually committing to not purchasing any more fabrics until they're all done so that segues nicely into the 60 day no buy challenge which is sewing exclusively from your stash so that's patterns and fabric and that is being run by So Legal Chick and Cherise Alchemy. Again just a bit of fun there's no prizes but a bit like an extreme frugal frocks just using what you've got. I know some people are sort of getting a bit bogged down with too much stuff so a good way of looking at what you've got and using it all up and making a commitment and that 
also ties in nicely with the slow fashion challenge. This has got daily prompts, no prizes again, just daily prompts for like an introduction. So if you've never done a, an Instagram challenge before, it would be a good one to get involved with to meet like-minded makers. It isn't just sewing isn't this one. One of the people that are running it is Real Adorn London and she's a jewellery maker. So it's a good way of becoming acquainted with people who are involved with the slow fashion movement, learning a few things and just sharing your ideas really. So there are daily prompts with that one and then you can post a photograph. Again, there's no massive commitment if you can't if you can't commit to it, it's not a big deal. But yeah, good way of being introduced to new brands, new sewers, new makers, maybe new crafts that are involved with the slow fashion movement. And that's it for new challenges for me. None of those have got prizes, but it might be nice if you're new to Instagram to get involved with a few of them. Certainly the Me Made Me is a, a big one. A couple of that are still going from last month is Sew That Pattern Now by Sew It Curly. That's going until the 31st of May and would also tie in nicely with the uh, 60 day no buy challenge because you're using a pattern that you've already got. I think there are prizes with the Sew It Curly one, so that's a good one. And if you happen to have a maxi dress that's a pattern that needs using, so a maxi for Mother's Day is going until mid-June, I think. And Jen at Jen's Sewing Room, one of my YouTube buddies, she's an ambassador for that and has just posted a video about it. So if you want to know a little bit more about it, I'll link to Jen's video below. I've mentioned both of those challenges before in previous videos, so I won't go into too much detail about those. So that's it for free patterns, challenges and discounts. So onto the draw for the voucher and for the Great British Sewing Bee book that I was running for last week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen whilst I do the draw and then announce the winners. So essentially I've got one that's open to everybody, that's the book, so that's international and UK and then one that is open to UK only, that's the voucher for Fabricate which is the shop that I work at. So what I'm going to do is just going to put in the word giveaway and see what it brings up for the first two. So if the first one is an international one, then that will be the book. If the second one is an international one, I will have to redraw it until I get a, a British one. Does that make sense? <laughs> I will cut to sharing my screen and we'll, we'll announce the winners. Well done to Marie G. You've won the book. I'll be in touch with you to send it out to you. And well done to Jack to in. I'll send you the voucher. So well done to the winners. If you can contact me below, that's great. If I can contact you on Instagram, I will do if I know who you are. If you can contact me on here, leave a comment below and we will sort out your prizes for you. So that's it from me today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Didn't think I'd get a lot of patterns for men's patterns, so a lot less free patterns this week for you, but a few more challenges and giveaways. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't done already and I will speak to you on Sunday. I will be showing you all my makes for April. Thanks for watching. I shall speak to you later. Bye.